guys, and welcome to another episode of Ninstar Thoughts. This is where we share our thoughts, ideas, and everything spooky about upcoming or already released video games. Now today we got a special subject, a really interesting one as well. But today with me we have Shadownade. What's up, ghouls? <laughs> and we got the mechanized Oshawa. What's up, goblins? Uh, I'll finish it off with Scalfords. Is that what they're called? Uh, yeah, Scalfords. I was close enough. Take three. <laughs> 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 no, we're sticking with this one. All right. all right, here we go. Now, all right, so if you guys are wondering, this is actually a Halloween special. Mm. We're going to be talking about the creepy stuff in video games, our favorite interesting ghosts or zombies in video games, mm. moments that creeped us out, and we're going to talk about a special theory, or well, I wouldn't say special, but more like an interesting theory that we kind of stumbled upon when we think maybe Nintendo is hiding a dark secret. Mm. So, yeah, alright. Well, let's get to it to start off with our favorite ghosts. So, do you guys got any, like, favorite ghosts or zombies that you're interested few, in video uh, games? I've got a few. Um, I guess I'll start off with one. Start off with one that's a bit of an Easter egg. It's in uh, Resident Evil 2. Um, if you, I think you get to, like, the raid at Raccoon City police station without any weapons. You encounter, like, a special zombie, which is actually the last person you see in the first game who's been turned into a zombie, which is a helicopter pilot. You got, like, a special gun for it. That's oh. one That's one, That's one. one zombie that I can think of. Um, but as ghosts, there's um, the ghost in uh, the Black and White series that I really, really like. Um, in Black and White, um, Pokemon Black and White, that is, in case um, there's another game called Black and White somewhere yeah, there out there. There's two games called Black and White. Oh, right? really? Okay. Um, Black and White, no, this is a bit off topic, but Black and White's a strategy game on the PC. But you play as God. Well, um, anyway, so well, black and white is Pokemon it, Is it edition. Pokemon Black and White or Pokemon Black and White version 2? It's it's both, <laughs> technically. Okay, no worries. Um, uh, yeah, in Black and White, there was um, a ghost, like a little, there's a girl who appears on um, the Marvelous Bridge, I think it was. Um, and um, you, if you come up to her and you try to talk to her, she actually disappears. And there's like NPCs who talk about... Um, talk about her as a character and like they go oh she's a girl who loved her family in Abra and um in black and white 2 you can enter a place called Strange House and um you actually encounter the girl and she says like really depressing lines about like being alone in the darkness having nightmares um crying out for her mum dad and her Abra and then um it turns out that she died from um Darkrai which was um giving her nightmares and she was trying to find the Lunar Wing to um return it to the Pokemon so she would not be terrorized but she died oh wow yeah so yeah i i haven't actually played through black and white all the way so that's actually quite interesting mm. um yeah kind of creepy <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah like to think you know it's that's pretty dark for a pokemon game yeah, well, yeah pokemon games since red and blue or red and green for the japanese ones but had really dark things hidden in them yeah, well, there you go. This per is no exception. <laughs> well, wow. So, yeah, Pokemon has been hiding secret stashes. However, mm. though... It's I all in black and white. <laughs> so I see pun. what you did there. <laughs> all right. I mean, pun! <laughs> However, okay, so what about, like, um, what about your favorite ghosts and zombies, man? Uh, well, does... Would Phantom Ganon count? Oh, yeah, totally. I would say so. Well, that's, like, the first one that comes to mind as a boss ghost type character yeah um yeah he was pretty cool how you traversed through paintings and you had to have you use your arrows and stuff he looked pretty cool as well and i think he made several reappearances in other zelda games other than ocarina of time yeah he would have yeah he did there was, was a spirit a... tracks was one of them yeah. no no i don't think he was in spirit tracks you sure I, i'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure he wasn't but in spirit there was a few was... um, reincarnations of the phantom oh the phantom ganon he yeah. was in um Four Swords Adventure. Yeah. Yeah, definitely remember that. And, and, well, an, a character that w is a ghost, but a, a, Never mind that. <laughs> All right. A ghost alongside ones that don't really have much of a story would be recently in, okay, it's not a Nintendo game, but Grand Theft Auto Five. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, I, we spent hours trying to find this one. Um, Can you tell me about it, guys? I have no idea. Okay. Yeah, well... At a certain time, I think it was like 11 p.m. exactly, on a little rocky cliff near a beach, 
this ghost will literally appear and it's not just like a human transparent it's like a scary looking demon thing and you can look at it from afar but it disappears when you get closer to it oh wow maybe you get close enough um you'll see the was it the mayor I don't know who it was. I, it I was like I Jock. I think it was the mayor. I think Jock is the mayor. Oh, uh, there was like blood. Yeah, where... was Jock and Jock was written in blood. Yeah. Who do you think John Tron's parrot was so murderous? Ka. The John Tron's parrot's name was Jacques. Jacques and Jock are two different things, bro. <laughs> <laughs> he quit. He quit. He quit. He's out of here. Looks like there's no escape. You out. can't get away from this Halloween special. No. <laughs> All right. Well, while you make your way back down and sit down, I'll talk about some of my favorite ghosts. Now, this is a favorite ghost that we mentioned in our top ten characters for Mario Kart. I think I know who it is. Oh, I love this ghost. Oh, uh, what's um Professor Gad doing in the list? He's not dead. Oh, no. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. He's old. He's an old man. God knows what could happen. But anyways, um, my favorite ghosts. Oh, one of my, I, got, I love the greenies from my. Uh, Mar- <laughs> from Mansion. Luigi's Mansion too. Yeah, from Luigi's Mansion. Mansion too. The greenies. They're so adorable and cute. Again, attacking you with like kitchen area weapons. Yeah. And they got like kitchen funny area. characteristics too. Like they like joking around with Luigi. They like play with items that's scattered. Mm-hmm. And they got adorable cutscenes as well. And you know, I-, I love the greenies. They they're like fun mischief little guys, and they're adorable. Oh, there's a lot of good ghosts in uh, Luigi's Mansion too. A lot of good ghosts. Um, one one such example would be the sneaker. Oh, the sneaker yes. is really cool. I like that one because he he lit he is he he friggin' he is freaky that one. Oh yeah, you, you like doing his voice, don't you? We, no, that's the, that's the grabber from oh. Luigi's Mansion one. Oh, that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I, I actually haven't played either Luigi's Mansion. I've played a bit of Luigi's Mansion 1, and I've watched <laughs> certain walkthroughs of Luigi's Mansion, but I have not played it. So. Uh, you should. It's a good game to pick up. Yeah. Alright, but yeah, um, that's one of my favorite ghosts. Uh, another one is probably a little bit, um, a little like, you know, hidden away. Not many people remember him, but it's actually King Boom Boom from Sonic Adventure 2. Uh, the, we, um, uh, yeah, yeah, he's just like again he's another funny kind of ghost but and you find him with knuckles like i don't get why he's even there in the first place what the heck is he doing in eggman's base i always found it weird that he appeared in eggman's base it's like yeah what did eggman never notice this before did it just sort of slip in exactly what, what if king boom boom was actually maria well, geez, she needs to get some um, facial reconstruction then. <laughs> totally. I mean, even the ghost, the hex maniac ghost in X and Y looks like a hex maniac, not a massive blob of ghost nest. <laughs> so there we go. Um, I think th- I've got one more to add. Okay? Yeah, um, add it to the list, man. The ghost from the Pokemon Tower, from the original Pokemon games, which turned out to be Marowak, which was Kieran's mother. Ah, uh, yes. And that was recently shown in the latest special Pokemon Origins. And they had a lot to it. And it was pretty cool how I remember as a kid, keep I kept throwing Pokeballs and it just kept going through the ghost. I'm like, I want to capture this ghost. Mm. And I never could, even with the self scope when it was revealed to be Marowak, because it was still a ghost. Yeah. So that was something that's like a part of Ghost from my childhood. Yeah. And while we're on the subject of Pokemon, there are a lot of creepy Pokedex entries. Um, a new one from X and Y is, um, what was the one, the pre-evolution of um, Triviant? Uh, Phantom? Yeah, Phantom. Um, its Pokedex entry actually mentions that it's, um, there's folklores going around that um, it's actually compro- um, made up of dead children's souls that were found, that got lost in the forest. Oh, wow. Mm. That kind of reference Ocarina of Time in a bit. Yeah. That I, I realized that, like, um, that saying, like, in Ocarina of Time, the Lost Woods, the kids that get lost into the woods, Turn lost into in Skull, skull kid. Kids. Yeah. Yeah. And then they drop a moon on the world just because they have angst. It wasn't his fault. Blame Majora. Yeah. God damn it, Majora. Damn it, Majora. Hey, I don't know. We can vote Josh and maybe he'll save the world. <laughs> hey! <laughs> <laughs> All right, but uh, how about we move on to our next topic and actually scenes that actually scared the crap out of us? 
All right, let's start with you, in Star Wars. Yeah. Oh, boy. There's a few scenes that kind of <laughs> scared the hell out of me. Um, i got to admit, one of the most recent things that scared the hell out of me, and I was actually... I just discovered it today, out of all. <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, this one. And it's probably one of the most recent, creepiest things in video games. Yeah. Um, it didn't actually Pokemon X and Y, would you believe? Oh my god, um, if you go on to the second floor in, uh, in an unnamed building in yeah, um, what's Lu it? Uh, Lumino, Lumino City, uh, Lumino. North, and North Boulevard, next to the um, gelati stand. That's right, so if you So if, uh, once you get creeped out, you can go get a nice gelati afterwards and you'll feel much you'll, at home. You'll cool off. So if <laughs> you actually go on to level 2 and walk down, go, on, go in the elevator, go up to level 2 and just watch. Yeah. Holy freaking crap, that scared the hell out of me. Like, it wasn't much, but yet it was, like, freaky at the same time. Oh, yeah. I love how the music stops for it as I well. I know. Oh, man. I almost had a heart attack. I swear to God. Like, something was going to happen bad. Something nasty was going to happen. And there was also something related. There was, like, a note behind a timetable or something in the train station in Lumius. Um, I think that has something to do with it. No? What oh, it say? wow. I cannot remember what it says. It was, like... <sighs> um, meet me in the usual place. I'll call for help or something. Something really eerie. Pass me your 3DS. I'm gonna have a look while we record. All right. So we actually got a 3DS, and we're gonna bust this myth right now. Yeah. All right. But while we're um busting that myth, we'll continue on. So that's one of the things that actually scared the hell out of mm -hmm. me. Um, other things that probably scared the um hell out of me. Um, oh man. I don't know, um, oh jeez, there's, there's a few things. One of the things that probably scared the hell out of me was, uh, it wasn't probably a tend to be scary, but it's one of um, Rare's evil doings. That, get out! Oh, from Donkey Kong 64. Yeah. Fucking yeah. hell. Did, did, yeah, did. just that, get out! Oh my god. Good old Rare, I mean... In terms of ghosts and zombies, I mean, the hell, they made Gruntilda a skeleton. Yeah. yeah. Really? So, oh, okay. Yeah, uh, Banjo Tui. Um, I know Make a Nice Dashboard over here hasn't played the games, which is basically a sin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but obviously Banjo and Kazooie are successful in defeating Grunty in the first game. Well, I kind of I kind of assumed that thing. Yeah. There wasn't number one in the series. <laughs> yeah, but her sister... Her sisters come to visit, and they bring her back to life. That's right. Oh well, what? That's some nice sisters for you. I mean, if I ever die, I would like my sisisters to bring me back to life. Oh, wait, and I'm speaking an only of child, I'm speaking fine. of dying, they die in, oh, with a like a what's it, a one ton falling on their heads in a quiz. What they? Wait, hang on. Wait, what? what? Gruntilda drops a one ton on top of their head. Oh, <laughs> one ton. Oh, one. T <laughs> you mean an anvil? Yeah, that's right. it. Um. Oh, I thought you meant like like those Chinese food like dumps like this. You just some drop it on their heads. <laughs> confused hey, how them. how would someone die from that? That'd be the worst. <laughs> That's probably how the um hex maniac died in um in um X and Y. All right. Well, I'm about to check out this myth I was talking about. All I right. Be I am behind a timetable in the Lumia station. Yep. Something is written on the back of this timetable. I'm going to go for help, wait in the usual place. And that's it. I'm going to go for help, wait in the usual place. Wow. Well, um... Alright. And she goes, no, you're not the one, and when you see her... So she was waiting. Ah, so we're learning more every day. There you go. Yeah. So, um, yeah, th that really, again, that, that the girl that you see in level 2, oh my god, it scared the freaking hell out of me. Like, mm. it just, it was just... Wow! Like it was, uh, you just didn't expect it. I mean, in Lumino City of all places. Yeah, and it was like you know, happy, cheery music, and then suddenly it just stops. Yeah, you know, what it's I mean? just silence like this. Uh. <laughs> all right. Well, I was gonna turn up the volume, then the Lumino City music fades back in. <laughs> all right, but however, though. Um, that's some of the scary stuff with me. What about you, man? Uh, mechanized. One thing, I guess, I guess, let me see. Um, one thing that got me was, um, 
Actually, in Conker's Bad Fur Day, um, when you die the first time, but then, of course, the, the actual Grim Reaper comes out, and you know, it's like, Gotta oh. love Greg. Greg is my favorite character. Like, at first, he actually was getting to me, and then I go, oh, wait. Okay. All right, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Um, but one recent one was actually in Luigi's Mansion 2. All right, now we're actually back in uh, the Pokemon Stadium. We're actually seeing Stadium. this... So Pokemon X and Y, we're actually seeing this clip. I wonder what she says now. Yeah, you, no, you're, you're not, not the one. one. Yeah, Hex Maniacs are cool in this game. And, then pro and Yeah, and that's another thing to mention again with that Pokemon thing. Her legs don't move. Yeah. They're like in still place. She, gl she glides She across. glides across. Yeah, just like in um the um the mansion in um Diamond and Pearl as well. Oh man, that that's just like still freaks me out. Like, oh, it just just sent a shiver down me. Mm. You know what I mean? Oh man. Anyway, so um, with um X and, uh, X and um Luigi's Mansion too. Um, it's start. It's in um the last mansion. Um, uh, Treacherous Mansion. Was uh, it? yeah, yeah. I think I know what you're talking about though. Yeah, uh, you. There's actually two instances of this. Um, and it's both in the same mansion. Um, first one is when you actually enter the mansion and um. You open up the front doors and it's just pitch black. Even your torchlight doesn't shine it up and like you know light it up. And then you turn around, there's a glare in the w the thing, and then King Boo appears. It's kind of cliche, sort of, but it was it got me. It got me. And um, damn, King Boo looked freaky in that um that moment. And one other time was actually um, you know when you get those still images from Professor Gad. Oh yeah. And you search around. That totally got me by surprise. And no, then, I had my headphones on and everything. <laughs> and he turned around and he found and he, he looked at King Boo and he actually turned around and there you go, King Boo. That's right. Oh my god! Like it's a still image, like it's a photograph. Yeah. And you, you you're supposed to be looking at a photo, right? And then you're looking for photo proof evidence. You find the you find King Boo in the photo, mm. and then Professor again is like, it can't be. It's King Boo. And then suddenly, King Boo in that freaking photo turns around and scares the hell out of you. Yeah. The freaking photo. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Oh God. He, King Boo. Ah, oh, we love you. Yeah. What about you, Josh? Anything scary? Um. For any game, I guess. Any game, man. Oof. There has been heaps of scary moments. Um, one that I can think of at the top of my head. Is probably the infamous eel from Super Mario 64. Oh, oh yeah. I'm not talking about the DS one, but just how the 64 one, like on the original Nintendo 64, looked. Yeah. And it was crazy as mm. hell. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was a bit aside from everything that you had to do, such as, except for that one star that you get. In the ship, I think. That's right. Um, there was another one where it's like just in the side, and you're a bit curious as to what it's doing there. Yeah. And you you would eventually swim there, and it just lunges out at you, and it's just crazy. And I'm just like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> well, in the subject of Super Mario 64, what about that piano? Oh. Wow. Oh yeah, dong, dong, dong. I gotta admit that kind of scared me a bit at first as well. Yeah, I didn't see that coming. Mm. Yeah. Oh my god. But you know what? Back in the classic days is when most of the scary stuff really happened. Yeah. yeah. And you uh, tend to, well, nowadays you tend to overlook it. Yeah. But, oh man, there's so many other scary stuff. I'll throw in one more thing too, and this this still kind of scares me to this very day, is the freaking Under the Well from Ocarina of Time. I hate it with a passion. Uh, yes. Uh, it's just scaring me. I, I just, I just, whenever I play Ocarina of Time, I don't, I never 100% at Ocarina of Time because I cannot do that well. Every, everything about that under the well scares the hell out of me, right? I just go in there, get the lens of truth, and get out as fast as possible. With the volume down. <laughs> That's how much of a chicken I am. That's with, how much of a wow. chicken you are. With, with the volume wow. down, with the volume down, playing like, live and learn, hanging on the edge of tomorrow. Oh, I'd love to see him in a haunted house just singing yeah. that out loud. I would, honestly. If I get scared of something or I get paranoid, I try to get my mind off it immediately. And it's, nothing gets your mind off it like And I'm like, I'm like, live and learn, hanging on the edge of tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. And 
There's probably one, speaking of Sonic, there's something that you probably really hate in a certain specific game, don't you, Josh? Oh dear, I know where this is going. Oh no, wait, I don't, what? Uh, uh, we gotta bring it up, yeah, we have it's, to. It's only, not, it's only fair. Well, okay, you, if you drop one Sonic name, one Sonic game name, I guess this will fill in the blanks for a lot of you. Sonic R. Yeah, Sonic R. Um, apparently there's something really scary about it. Like, it's it's just a um, creepypasta, really, isn't it? Yeah, but then it depends on how you are. Like, if you're a fan of the game or the series, that creepypasta has a different effect on you. So, we'll use this one as an example, although I could talk about another one in a bit. But, the Tails doll. Ah. Uh... I, that one rendered me pretty damn crazy back in the high school days. I mean, it's just that the fact... I mean, I know at the time... Well, at, like now I believe it can't count as a TV and, you know, kill you and take your soul and whatever. That's just fairy tale stuff, I hope. Well, it's already happened to me. Yeah. Uh, numerous times. Numerous yeah, times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, That's right, I absorb people's souls. I'm like Shang Tsung from Mortal Kombat. But anyways, go on. Yeah. By um, the way, he's pretty creepy, yeah, FYI. Yeah. So, knowing me, like, when I get into something, I can't get out of it as easy. And so I was reading into it, and I just read the whole thing and, like, just various stories, and, you know, it just got to me. And even the tail stole itself as a character is pretty creepy. I mean, it's yeah. like Eggman's creation of tails that isn't, like... Why couldn't he have just done, like, metal tails? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He had to make a doll that looks really weird and flies by itself. Mm. Yeah. I guess, um, yeah, well, it's all it's all fan theory and speculation, yeah. but one, one, like, uh, with creepypastas, I never really believe them. I just, they kind of just sort of like, eh. But, but one, one that, one that, that close to believe, oh, I'll let you go. I think uh, we could be no, talking about the same one, but. I, let's see what you're going to say and then I'll. I'm thinking about Ben. I was going to bring Ben up. Yeah. I was going to bring up different. All right. Well, we'll hear yours. And well, yeah. Um, most of the game, most of the um, creepy passes, I think, are just. Yeah. But one that I thought was really well done was um, Pokemon Lost Silver. Ah, uh, yeah. How they made a game for it. Yeah, I, I thought the game was actually really well done, but um, the creepy pasta. Uh, yeah. Well, it wasn't one of the worst creepy pastas where it's like a hand came out of the TV and clawed my face and ripped my family in half sort of stuff like that unbelievable kind of crap but um like it was i was just genuinely creepy and i was like oh, okay that's actually a good um creepy blaster instead of those just sort of like oh god why are you even typing them yeah some yeah. of them are just cancerous i have to say mm. but um but what about ben ben he they um deducible who have actually spoken to once like not personally but i've like seen some stuff about him and like you know chatted like on a forum He's got, like, he created Ben Drowned, which is a Majora's Mask creepypasta that's very famous amongst most people across the internet. And he actually provided visual evidence from that, which in the end turned out to be fake. But he knew hacks and cheats on an emulator that made it look so real it was scary. It involved, um, the original story involved a young guy, which was him, deducible, I forget his real name, he buys a copy of Majora's Mask from an old man, and on there is a save file under the name of Ben. And as soon as he, I think he deletes Ben first, and then starts his own game, and things start to go all weird in Clock Town, and so on and so forth. Like, stuff goes weird, the music of, like, Song of Healing gets played backwards, and the Elegy of the elegy of emptiness statue starts following him, like he's not summoning it, but it's just slowly following him around. And I guess it was the visual evidence and the story itself, when put together, created quite a frightening experience. And even that made Majora's Mask still my favorite game because it has that potential to be to have something else within it created. Yeah. So. It is a pretty creepy one. Like, although it's confirmed to be a fake, yeah. But um, 
it, it got me shaking when I heard about it. The way that it was presented and such. Yeah, yeah. It, it really did freak me out. Alrighty. There was one more that I wanted to specifically mention as well. That, um, that kind of, that is a bit creepy and some people are a bit meh, but it just goes to show that in Nintendo games, there's a lot of dark side. Um, in Mario Galaxy 2. Are we talking in, about the shadows? At the yeah, the oh. shadows. In Mario Galaxy 2, and also it made another reappearance in Mario 3D Land. Um, on the 3DS. I, I'm going to have to beg to differ. Honestly, it looks more like a Shy Guy. The one in <laughs> the 3D Land. I'm not going to lie. It looks like those Shy Guy ghosts from um, um, Luigi's Mansion. Probably. But still, again, what the hell was it doing there? Like, why? Why is Nintendo... Why are game developers putting creepy shit in, this, in the games? It's because we like it. Let's not... We like, can't deny that. We like it. Like those shadow, shadow figures... Um, in Mario Galaxy, the... The hell tree bellies. Yeah. The hell yeah. valley trees. My oh. god. One tree hill. Hell valley tree. Like, it's really... What the hell? Like... Oh, man. Like, he's like... This is supposed to be innocent games. Like, Pokemon, for instance, you know? Luigi's Mansion, I guess, is just natural scare. Yeah, I guess yeah. that's what it was it going had, for. It had a horror theme to it. had a horror theme. I guess that's understandable, but... The Pokemon games with all the dark stories, the hidden ghostly cameos in the Mario games. Even um even the level even Majora's mask was pretty damn dark itself, you know what I mean? Like, oh wow. Man. Let's just get a general game feel. One game feel one one game that definitely gave me that um feel as well was actually the very first Bioshock. Bioshock was yeah. fun. Yeah, that that actually gave me that because when you arrive in Rapture and it's all like destroyed, it's like, whoa, wait, hang on, what? Alright, here we go. Prepare to uh, have a bucket for your poop because you won't be wearing your pants because you will be shitting them. Yeah. Essentially. That's like, like you got that feel from that game. Yeah. And while we're on the subject of um, um, first person shooters and sort of like disturbing stories, we can't go and we can't go on, we can't not go on and not mention the big motherfucker of all video games. Doom. Oh man! Yeah, yeah. We can't. We I, can't not mention that. I think. Yeah, I have Doom. I had Doom sixty four as a kid, and I've still got my cartridge of it. The one thing that creeped me out was like in the first stage when you're going off an elevator, you open it and a monster's charging at you, mm. and it's just giant. I can't even. I don't even know what they're called. I, I stopped playing it then and there. I shut off my Nintendo. I'm like, no, I'm done. Yeah. yeah. There's there's been a few times with um, some games that I just like. Because of they're so damn creepy, I like avoid it. You know what I mean? Like, mm. like I avoid it as much as possible. Like again, like the under the well. It's just so scary uh, for me that I just can't do it. Yeah, you, can't. you know what I mean. Some people might think I'm a chicken. Again, I'll play live and learn. And more like cuckoo. <laughs> yeah, more like a cuckoo in this case. Yeah, context, context. Uh, cuckoos are the chickens of Zelda. At least I get to hang out with Andrew. <laughs> oh, yeah. Giggity. <laughs> All right, but I guess we should um, close off with that topic and um, move to our final one. Or, yeah. Uh, yeah, one, one that, more quick thing to throw. No, not really. I thought that's what we were going to. Never mind. No, well. I, I, I'll, I'll just, I'll, I guess I can just go on record and say I'm really shocked with the internet that there's no creepypasta about Amy Rose. Because, seriously, just, just take a moment and look at that. Look at that face. That, look... You better be showing this picture, by the way, so people know what I'm talking about. But look into those eyes. Do they look like the the eyes of emptiness? Well, they look like she she wants to absorb your soul. They look like Sonic's eyes. Does that mean? Yes. Before you go there, yes. Sweet mercy. God help us. All right, let's move on. <laughs> because you know, seriously, before we before we move on though, where did she get those hammers from? And that's why I mention her like that. Where she gets her hammer's from, it's like how Peach pulls out a toad out of her dress. Now, alrighty. Well, then Peach is in there too. No, there you go. Alright, now let's move on to our final topic. And it's a, a, a theory that we came up with. We compiled. That really makes sense. Right. And, um, and it's got something to relate with Princess Peach. Yeah, um... If you guys are unfamiliar with the original Japanese storyline of um, the Super Mario Brothers game, uh, let me just give you a quick synopsis. Um, Princess Peach has magical powers, and um, 
King Koopa wants to invade the Mushroom Kingdom. Um, so what King Koopa does is he kidnaps Princess Peach to hold captive. But what he does is he turns all the citizens of the Mushroom Kingdom into stone bricks. Uh, the only person who can undo the curse, however, is Princess Toadstool herself. So it's up to none other than Super Mario Mario to save the day. That's right. Um, now, so with all the toads turned into blocks, and Mario breaking the blocks... Mmm, that's what you do every, in the game. Yep, that's what you do in the game. you got to have to hit those blocks, especially if you want to power up. Right? However, though, that's the creepy part. Like, that's one of the creepy part. It's killing innocent toads. A lot of people have picked up on that already. You're killing a bunch of innocent toads. That's right. Like, not just one. Not just two. But, like, hundreds of them. That's right. Billions upon bill. Well, not billions, but otherwise the toads will be extinct. That's right. Um, so, all these toads were butchered by Mario. And that, that's nothing compared... I mean, sorry, I mean... Compare that to, like, the Shrooms invasion of the Mushroom Kingdom back in Mario and Luigi's Partners in Time. Compare that to Mario, who's a famed hero, slaughtering all the people he cares he's trying to protect. Yeah, and that what kind of Just to get to 50 it. points. <laughs> uh, but that kind of leads on to the theory that we came up with. Mm. Um, first of all, if we were going by the Japanese story, technically, the Super Mario Brothers 2 is Lost Levels. Yes, correct. Which is a, di a direct sequel with the same plot. Yep. Right? So, let's bypass that game with the same story in hand and move to Mario Brothers 3, which is the true sequel, mm -hmm. right, of Mario Brothers 1 and 2. Now, this is the interesting part. Mario Brothers 3 was the first game to debut the Ghost Boo. That's correct. Right? So, Boo made his first appearance in the game and he's always gone for Mario and Luigi you know mm. what I mean when when you look at him he just hides but when you turn around he's after you that's right and he wants to get you right so it just makes you think where did the booze come from mm. you know what I mean like they're ghosts you know wandering spirits lost spirits you know what I mean so we came with the theory that all those innocent toads that Mario and Luigi killed, well, mainly Mario, mm. were, were all the boos now attacking them. Well, were all the toads that were once yeah. bricks. And um, this theory, I actually have a bit of evidence that supports it. In uh, Mario Super Mario World, um, there are some boos that you look at that actually turn into blocks. That's right. So, how's that for evidence? That's right. Yep, so there you go, you know what I mean? Like, that's that's our theory. But now you guys are probably wondering, and this is probably something I haven't told you, why are the Boozer always after Luigi in Luigi's Mansion? Do you know the reason why? Um, uh, may as well throw it out there. No, well, I tell you what, the reason being is because they're just doing it for fun. They already got their original prey. Yeah. Mario was captured both times. Yeah. The, the, yeah, sure, the game features Luigi, but the real target the booze went for first was Mario. So there you go. Yeah. That another supports the theory. Mm. So, and you guys are probably wondering where the King Booze came from? Well, they're probably... That an, probably was the ninth, the ninth level of um, Super Mario Brothers 3's King. Yeah, either that or well, since the, this theory is starting from Mario Brothers 3... It's probably just, you know, King Toads, or the elderly, or the, mm. or the, 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 the big Toads. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But there you go. So that is our theory. All the boos that you see in every Mario game today is actually the innocent Toads that you killed back in the original Mario Brothers and Mario Brothers Loft levels. Indeed. And um, they want their payback. That's the reason why they're always going for Mario. Or they could simply just be semen from a Nintendo Sex Ed video. Yes! That too. <laughs> so what is your thoughts about that, um... Shadow Shadownade. Well, I guess I would agree with you guys there. It sounds very believable as a theory. It's just that I had my own suspicion that what if 
one player which recognized Osho what made a point before this video. What if like one player could go through the whole Mario game without hitting any blocks? That would basically you know negate the theory, but nine times out of ten the people playing it are just I'd say newbies nine, like me. I I'd say nine point five times out of ten, it's a gamer's instinct to hit the blocks mm. in front of you. I mean Mm -hmm. I could try and avoid them, but I know there'd be like a force of habit that would make me press A. Mm -hmm. That's right. So like, yeah, sure. Like, but again, this is just going by competitive, you know, speed running gameplay. Honestly, yeah. If you're trying to not hit a block, but in the end, right? Even if you're speed running, you gotta have the visible blocks. Indeed. And, and again, visible blocks. Blocks are blocks. Mm. That's right. So um, that again supports our theory. So. And that probably explains why mushrooms come out of the blocks. Yeah. And flowers as well, for that matter, because what do you do when you put it on a gravestone? Wow. Holy crap. Wow. <laughs> Jesus. I honestly just pulled that out of my ass. <laughs> but that is actually makes sense. <laughs> so there you go. You honestly, like... The pieces fall together. All mm. of them do, even the freaking fly files. I was wondering how that could work. Yeah. Well, <laughs> there you go. Solved. Their flowers left at a tomb. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. So, I guess that kind of wraps up our theory. Indeed. So, um, yeah, well, I hope you enjoyed this special Halloween episode of Nin Star Forts. So, um, do you want to quickly say one final thing, guys? Jeremy, do you have anything? Um, to all you Americans out there, have a happy Halloween. And to all the people in this room, I'm about to unleash something really scary. Oh uh, yeah? <laughs> this is Ninstar Rose, signing out. This is Mechanized Oshawott's Bows, signing in. <laughs> this is Shadow Nate getting the hell out of here. <laughs>